weather seems nice today and I noticed there's a lot of signs now where they're saying they're doing that pilot project where people can drink alcohol in the parks. Let's see if that changes anything, huh? And with that in mind, what's going on today? I guess in terms of things like regulations and stuff, that remote ID is coming in the US where they're making it mandatory for a lot of people who fly drones, but apparently I guess they're going to delay it. This one says FAA extends remote ID enforcement date six months. Drone pilots who are unable to comply with the broadcast requirement of the remote ID rule will now have until March 16, 2024 to equip their aircraft. So why would that be the case, huh? Either way, they're still using that fear, I guess, narrative of you better do this, otherwise you'll be fined and all that. It says after that date, operators could face fines and suspensions or revocation of pilot certificates. In making this decision, the FAA recognizes unanticipated issues that some operators are experiencing finding some remote identification broadcast modules. Drone pilots can meet this deadline by purchasing a standard remote ID equipped drone from a manufacturer or purchasing a remote ID module which can be affixed to existing drones that do not have remote ID equipment. So there it would make me wonder if that is the case where they're just not prepared in general. And when I say that, for example, it will be no difference than here initially when they propose everyone who flies a drone and so forth, you need things like insurance and all that. And they're wondering, how can you mandate it when there's nothing really available in that sense? They just have the attitude of, oh, well, we'll just introduce the law and everything will play itself out. I don't think it works that way. Fortunately, that was scrapped, but it makes you wonder if that was the reason for this to be delayed for six months as well. And they go on to say remote ID acts like a digital license plate and will help the FAA, law enforcement and other federal agencies find the control station when a drone appears to be flying in an unsafe manner or where it is not allowed to fly. I've talked about that plenty of times where this is not like, for example, a license plate in the car and all that. It's just so flawed, that analogy, and just in general, no one's been able to counter me on those points. And again, it makes you wonder what was the real reason for this? As well, I was actually kind of interested to see when that date came, whether or not people would, I guess, comply with it in the US or if they will say, forget it, we're not following it in general. I guess for the most recent story too, about that place in New Mexico banning guns, for example, saying that goes against the constitution and stuff in the US. It sounds like from the stories I read like there, people are just saying no, authority figures, officials saying no, we're not going to enforce this and all that. So I was actually kind of curious to see if that's what was going to happen in the US. But either way, for people in the US, there is a delay. So let's see what happens from then on. And this was an interesting read, I thought. You've often heard of stories of people using drones to quote, harass animals as people say, or using them during hunting when you're not supposed to. How about this one? This one says, men convicted for using drone to harass mule deer, then killing animal illegally. A tip from the public led to three men being convicted of several wildlife crimes after using a drone to harass a trophy-sized mule deer buck in an effort to drive it off private lands so they could kill it. How about that? It's trying to get through some technicalities and stuff like that, huh? It says, Bailey Thomas, 23 of Las Vegas, and James Ebert, 51, and his son Justin Ebert, 22, who are both from Calente, spotted the animal in an area where it was illegal to kill it, so they used a drone to chase the animal from the property onto public land. But Thompson, who shot and killed the animal, did not have a tag for the property where the buck was killed. So much technicalities in this thing in terms of, I guess, the people trying to get away with it in terms of shooting the animal and all that. It says, I'm not quite sure what these men were thinking, said Captain Jake Creamer, Nevada Department of Wildlife Game Warden. They went to the trouble of illegally using a drone to chase this animal off private land only to shoot it in the wrong unit. All their efforts only compounded their trouble. And what is the ultimate punishment? It says all three will split a $15,000 penalty and will have their hunting, fishing, and trapping privileges suspended for five years. They will also be entered into the Interstate Wildlife Violators Compact, keeping them from hunting in more than 45 states. So do you think that's a reasonable, I guess, conclusion in terms of their punishment and all that? Or do you think it should have been harsher? Either way, again, it makes you wonder what the heck were they thinking? And I was reading this piece of news that actually made a lot of people here upset. Remember when I visited that festival over the weekend where shortly after I left, apparently there was a stabbing? So they caught the person who did it, fortunately, but the story on who it was is making, again, people outraged. This one said, how is it 
possible, David Evey calls for review into stabbing suspect's release from psychiatric facility. Imagine that, someone coming out of a place like that shortly after he starts stabbing people, you wonder how the heck did you let that person out? Premier David Ebby is calling for an independent review into how the suspect in this weekend's triple stabbing in Vancouver's Chinatown was able to get an unescorted day release from a psychiatric facility saying the decision left him white hot angry. And read what this guy apparently did in the past. It's one of these things where I guess lawyers win. It says, in 2008, Donnelly was found not criminally responsible on account of a mental disorder for stabbing his teenage daughter to death in 2006 and was sent to the forensic psychiatric hospital in Coquitlam. Three months later, he qualified for what is called escorted community access. In 2009, he was granted the chance to have unsupervised community visits for up to 28 days in length. While out on one of these visits in October 2009, he stabbed a friend while in a psychotic state. He was held criminally responsible for his actions according to the BC Review Board documents. So it's one of those like what, repeat offender kind of thing? And it says, I cannot fathom how someone who murdered his daughter was released in 2009, went out and stabbed someone else, would then be released again unaccompanied somehow, be able to go out and buy a knife, go to Chinatown and stab three people. How is that possible? Evie said Tuesday. That's true, isn't it? How in the world was this guy let out? Can this guy even be quote saved afterwards when you don't do anything I guess? Look what happens. Innocent people get harmed. What would you think in this case? Should the people who let this guy out be held responsible per se? That's kind of crazy. Especially with this guy's history and all that. Alright, see you guys later.